All right, so uh, Patrick Chapin is playing a blue-black control deck. Uh, it's pretty stock. I'm looking over his list right now. You too. Nothing here is too out of the ordinary, except... Is, are those Memnites in his sideboard? They are. So he can... Uh, I'm sorry. Wow. Gosh. So, okay, so let's go over uh, Chapin's sideboard real quick. That's crazy. So, okay, so he's got... So, uh, it's mostly stock. He has a uh, Mind Rot, which is uh, pretty good against the Valakut decks. Uh, that's Patrick Chapin on your screen right now. And, uh, but he's got Memnite, which is a really interesting yeah. inclusion. Maybe just there to block the Boros guys, you just lay it down. It's like a weird removal spell. Yes. Um, what is what is this Vampire, Nighthawk, uh, right. Lucian What is I mean, this? Skin Render. Okay. Skin <laughs> render. Right. Yeah, Chippy's handwriting is, is way too nice uh, yeah. for a necklace. But, uh, so anyway, so I'll, for those of you who are joining us, this is uh, Gavin Verhey, joined by Joey Pasco uh, for uh, SCG Live, coming to you live from San Jose, California for the Star City Games Open Series. On the right of, it, of your screen, we'll see Patrick Chapin, uh, the innovator, great deck builder, pro tour player, one of the most popular Magic players out there. On the left, we'll see newcomer Carlos Alay playing blue-white against Chapin's blue-black. This is round five of nine, and let's see what's going on. So it looks like uh, Chapin's gonna open with uh, Inquisition Kozilek. Yeah, it's uh, uh, see, is that Day of Judgment, Jay Soap? Gideon, I saw Gideon in there, but uh, Chapin is a frequent guest on Yo MTG Taps. For those of you who uh, who'd like to listen to some interviews, um, we've had him. I had him last year during the Magic Cruise. Had him on uh, during the summer at uh, at Nationals. I had him on again a little bit after Nationals, talking a bit about Pyromancer Ascension. Uh, he was also on episode 50. Um, and he was also on, I believe, episode 48, where we were at the StarCityGames.com Invitational. So, um, he, like I said, he's a frequent guest uh, on Yo MTG Taps. Good friend of the show. So we go with a... Uh, he preordained on turn two, as along with that Inquisition. What did he take with the Inquisition, did you see? Uh, because I yeah, we didn't take anything. I didn't, there wasn't anything that cost uh, oh, 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 in, in wow. the right range. Yeah, I was going to say I didn't see it. Can't see a graveyard. Jason the Mindscalker. Chapin playing uber fast here. He's already got a Jason play before we even finish discussing what happened on turn two. Mystifying Maze, that's an interesting <laughs> conclusion. Yeah, some of the world's deck had Mystifying Maze too, and they said they were uh, pretty good for them. Yeah, I played a bit with that card, and I was, uh, I was impressed with it. I mean, uh, I'm a big fan of Maze of Ith. Now this is <laughs> no Maze of Ith, but it was it was one of my favorite cards back when, uh, well, not necessarily when it was standard legal. It was when I was still playing casually uh, in the mid '90s. But seeing a, a throwback to Maze of Ith with a uh, mystifying maze, it's pretty uh, pretty cool. So Jace, here we go with the uh, Jace trade here. If you want to play EDH slash Commander, Shapen draws pre right He's got another Jace in hand, it looks like. And he goes, looks like he's going for it. Another Jace. Zero voting. And he goes uh, Brainstorm. Did he Brainstorm with the first Jace? I kind of missed that. He's moving so fast. <laughs> yeah, the, these players, I mean, they know they're playing a control mirror. They know they're going to have to play fast. They don't want to pick up a draw. I've always been impressed with how fast uh, Patrick plays. I noticed it at first uh, when I was on the Magic Cruise with him last year, um, watching him pilot. He was pretty much playtesting his blue-white list that he ended up playing at Pro Tour San Diego um, right after the Magic Cruise. And uh, I, I was very impressed with the speed of his play. Oh, my bad. <laughs> that was from the volume from the MTV uh, ad here. There you go. Um, that, yeah, maybe YouTube was muted. What? Or maybe that sound was just terrible. <laughs> um, if you saw the, uh, yeah. uh, oh man, see what's, what's happening here. Besides Rashad making fun of me. If you guys saw the uh, the guy in the red shirt in the background of the shot of uh, of Carlos a moment ago, that is Inkwell Looter. Uh, he he walked away since then, but uh, he uh, he's he's one of the artists who kind of does a lot of cartoon sort of uh, caricatures of different magic cards. Uh, check out his blog. I believe it's inkwelllooter.blogspot.com. Yeah, 
So we've got a uh, fencer in play. Oh, and they're using uh, the classic ripped up paper tokens to keep track of fencer's uh, planeswalker status. That's classic. You're playing planeswalkers and you don't have die. <laughs> uh, joined in the booth by Glenn Jones uh, for the moment. Gavin's stepped away. How's it going, Glenn? Uh, it's going good. Uh, what do you think of Venser as a control on um, control threat? Uh, I, I love Venser. I mean, I love Venser in general. I oh, think I he's. I, like, I feel like he's a kind of bizarre design. Like his abilities don't seem to mesh at all. Really. Yeah. But they are certainly strong, and uh, it's kind of the, his his plus is actually one of the weaker pluses, I think. But at the same time, it gets him up there so fast, and his ultimate's just a backbreaker. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen anyone crack it and lose. Now, someone I believe it was Michael Jacobs said. Um, said the great thing about Venser is it forces you to play with good cards already. Because of his plus ability, <laughs> it makes you want to play with cards like Spreading Seas and Wall of Omens and things that you can get a benefit out of blinking. And um, I think even though his plus ability seems weak, it really is dependent on, on your strategy. It's got a lot of possibility for synergy. Um, I was playing around a, a with a blue-white list that, uh, that had Venser and Elspeth and Sun Titans, and it was just absurd the kind of things where you'd be playing yeah. you know, Sun Titan with Journey to Nowhere and, um, and Spreading Seas and, and all those kinds of things, and you're blinking the Sun Titan to get back Journey to Nowhere or get back <laughs> uh, Tectonic Edge, and, and, and it's, it's just it? yeah. Yeah. the synergy... Like, the potential for synergy with Venser is what impresses me. One of the things um, I uh, actually really like about him is, especially against Blue Black, which typically only had like Seagate Oracle as a little guy, like his mm -hmm. plus can actually race the Oracle, getting to ultimate even against a beater. Yeah, leaving that's a good the Blue point. Black deck just has to creeping tarp it every now and then just to keep him in, in check. Yeah. And every time you tarp it, that's four mana. You don't have to use Priority. to defend with a mana leak or something like that on the other turn. Yeah. And mana is obviously huge too because Tech Edge is probably a staple in both decks, and they can just defend that way. Right. We see there's already three tech edges on it's, the board right now. It's really peculiar how mana denial has become like a forefront in standard. Yeah. As it used to be, you know, you think mana denial, you think like an aggro Ponza deck, like right deck decks back in the day, right? Like, but nowadays, it's how the control decks fight each other by controlling mm -hmm. what you can access, Strike what you can't, and yeah. even like the control Destroy decks want mana denial the against the aggro decks, which is a complete yeah. reversal. And speaking of mana denial, Chapin just uh, just, tech just edge used two yeah. tech edges. I think he had two. There, there were three tech edges yep. on the board. Stacked now there are none. On, uh, so got rid of those lands. That's a trick a lot of people don't realize they can run. Yeah, it's uh, quite a difference. Now I remember seeing spreading seas and just shrugging it off. You know, like oh, yeah. who who cares about making the land into an island, right? You yeah, know, it was, and it, I uh, I definitely almost lost a match to someone who I couldn't believe should be beating me in a match of Magic thanks to their. Uh, Sweet spreading seas deck, uh, yeah. contaminated bond did a similar thing every now and then. Right. You, know, you don't really think about it, but that kind of Zero stuff can accumulate so weirdly. Yeah, I remember what was it last last fall? Was it Jerry? I think had the spreadum mm -hmm. list, and that was and I ben think Lundberg. the first time we saw saw, yeah. saw that being used, and it was kind of like, is spreading seas a real card? Yeah. And here we are, you know, a year later, and it certainly is. It's still it's managed to hold on even after Jun, which was obviously the deck that it crushed the most, yeah. but its applications have just stuck. It's, I mean, add draw a card to a card and it becomes surprisingly playable no matter right. what card it is. And we were saying earlier about how good it is against positive. vampires. Even a mono-colored oh, yeah, no. deck, even a mono-black vampire so list, good. because that that deck needs so much black mana. Yeah, so especially Calastria Highborn, it so limits what they yeah. can do with that in conjunction with Blood Gas, Viscera Seers. So it looked like uh, Chapin played a... Uh, Either a duress or an inquisition. Kind of missed it. But yeah, I know there were we some. Off, we went off board there. Yeah, we're a little off screen here, but uh, we've got at least a. Uh, I saw a full art day of judgment in hand. Mm -hmm. Not that that is super relevant. I mean, it's relevant yeah. against a grave titan. Yeah. But uh, at the moment, it's not super relevant. So. It seems like this game's going to get decided by the walkers. Uh, yeah, the it's basically. Behind, right? We've got Jace and Venser. Jace uh, is and in charge. Yeah, Jace is absolutely just sitting there. Oh, now we can making game the game. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it was. <laughs> Did he whiff on the Inquisition? I, I, I don't know. He, the other guy's yeah, he whiffed, he whiffed on an yeah. earlier Inquisition, so I think you're right. So that might be Just two checking. Inquisitions that he in, in, uh, whiffed on. Yeah. No mana leaks in sight. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, plus two. Targeting the aisle. Yep. Pass turn. 
Oh, and Gavin's back, which means I get to go do right early. All right, well, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining so, uh, us for the moment, Glenn. I'm sure I'll see you later. <laughs> Everybody, uh, Gavin is back. So what I miss? Um, Jace and Venser. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, it's a, it's, uh, there was some tectonic edge action, which is why Carlos has only three lands on board. Huh. Um, Chapin had two active edges, and uh, Carlos had one. And I don't know who activated what, but what ended up happening was no tectonic edges. But Chapin seems to, well, obviously, with Jace on board, is having no Sorry, issues hitting his mana. And uh, Venser is sitting there not really doing all that much. I assume he's been pretty much just ticking lands, you know, uh, blinking lands. At least we got a die on that Venser because he was using the paper. <laughs> he was using the ripped up paper. I mean, the Venser doesn't really, really look that impressive in, in his deck. I mean, he can reset his Planeswalkers, which is nice, but for creatures he just has four Squadron Hawks, which Vensering, not, not so strong. Right. And I mean, he, he can, it is, it is something he can do if, right. if he wants he Sun can. Titan. But Sun Titan is, is the big one. Obviously, right. Venturing Sun Titan is... is Venturing awesome. a Sun Titan to get back a Squadron Hawk to grab more seems seems good. I mean, it also all depends on if those Sun Titans... I mean, if those Squadron Hawks are still in your deck. Right, so, uh... Chip has got a duress here, which will probably strip something out of Carl's hand. Those discard spells are just so crucial in this matchup. Yeah, but funny, he's whiffed on two Inquisitions. Oh, well, so he uh, he spell pierces here. And I wonder if he's going to pay. Yeah. Made uh, yes. yeah, Inquisition is, is a is an issue because uh, there's not always things to hit. But with duress, they either have nothing or they're going to be able to hit something. All right, I, uh, I won't right well, he's at least successfully duressed away a spell pierce, right? <laughs> I mean... So he chose to not pay for the duress. So that's which, fine. Which, which, is the, spell which is, I think, you know, there's the, uh, the thought process that that's exactly what Carlos wanted him to do. Yeah. Alright, so Chapin uh, fate seals and says keep it. Um, looks I like he Venser is with uh, swinging at the Venser with a tar pit, making sure that Venser is not going to go ultimate anytime soon, which is pretty, uh, pretty well, important. That Venser's power. ultimate could be bad, but yeah, he goes and uses his tectonic edge to destroy uh, Carlos's fourth land. Um, so Carlos is back down to three lands. Looks like he's uh, he just ticks Venser up. Blinked his island. Chapin has yeah, looks like Carlos. Yeah, Carlos. yeah. three lands. They're only three. Yeah, he just had four, but Chapin <laughs> drew another tectonic edge. So and uh, Chapin's got an Inquisition. And that Jace and is taking care of any business leak. that Carlos might have. Chapin's not playing Ulamog, is he? No. No. Okay. Uh, for some no. reason, he's trying Chapin's to see what Chapin's only creatures hand. are three Grave Titans and one Vampire Nighthawk. And another one in the sideboard. Yeah. And that, go once again, goes back to the deck for 75. One main deck Vampire Nighthawk might sound kind of strange, but he was like, well, I need him to get uh, some matchups, and I'll main deck one and sideboard the other. Plus two, uh, rough position for Carlos here. What's that? I'm gonna look at the top part of your library. Okay. All right, that's Chapin doing his thing. He's locking his opponent out. In position of puzzle with you. Doing a great job of it. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, if he's fate sealing, it's not going to be. Carlos is going to be gone. We've got cancel mana leak, day of judgment, day of judgment. <laughs> what are those other two full arts? Is uh, that uh, there's Gideon? I think it's just another day of judgment. Okay. Gideon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just all things. James like, yeah. All right. Fine. <laughs> yeah. I got like, this Jace. Yeah, none of that deals with my active Jace. Yeah. Even Good if the Jace is, I know there you can't see the Jace. It's off screen, but yeah. the Jace is there. Right. Yeah, it, the Jace is under the uh, under the graphic. Yeah, under under round five. Destroy glacial yeah. fortress. Jace is under the graphic, so we're having trouble seeing. We're gonna try and get that that Jace in clear view for you because. Yeah. Uh, Fate seal. Otherwise, it looks like Patrick is, is just uh, running big cheats over there. Yeah, keep it, the top yeah. card of your deck. 
Yeah, it's scoop it up. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> He's gonna go and say, "Put the J's." Never mind. I mean, I'm sure he'll just tell him. Yeah. I mean, they're they're staying in uh, in range of, of our our cape, which you guys can maybe barely see. But uh, we've got a a field marked off for them. But unfortunately, the graphics can cover parts of it. So there's Patrick going with the uh, sideboard plan, shuffling his sideboard in. Looks like. And then going through and picking them out. That's something that someone recommended to me back years ago, I want to say like in like 2002 or 2003. And I, was, I thought that was always such a great idea doing the, uh, you know, shuffle your sideboard into your deck and then pull 15 cards out rather than, uh, yeah. rather than just digging through your 15 card sideboard and putting, you know, four cards down. And then obviously I just sided in four cards. You, you, know? you have to be careful about that though. Uh, last year, I was playing both Seiju, or sorry, I was playing a Skip and a PTQ, and I had both Seiju to shield all on my sideboard, and I just, you know, put 15 cards, take 15 out, no big deal. Until I uh, actually drew my both Seiju with the zoo in my opening hand, because I shuffled my whole sideboard in and forgot to take the Seiju out. Oh, right. Uh, would not be the first time that has occurred. Either. Well, yeah, that's always. Uh, really important. It's just know your deck list cold. <laughs> well, it's not just know your deck list, but it's so easy. You know, you're, you only have three minutes of sideboard. Yeah. And you want to shuffle in that time too. And you're like putting all these cards in, and you go through, take things out. And maybe, like I like to vary up my sideboarding a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. I love giving, giving sideboard plans. I love telling people how to sideboard. But at the end of the day, I think it's important that you know how to adjust your sideboarding based on what your opponent has, because all sideboard different against the same deck depending on who's playing it, what I've seen them play, um, and so on, if I'm on the player or the draw. And uh, th there are times Blank that... Uh, That's it. uh, it's not... Sorry. It's okay. No, no, it's cool. Uh, so th there are times where I want to, you know, change up my sideboarding, and I'll be like, okay, I'll put in 15 cards, go to take out my 15, and then, you know, I think I did it correctly, I just left something wrong in. Sometimes it works in my favor. Oh, I've definitely uh, kept, you know, one time I kept a, uh, a Celestial Purge in against some deck that I thought had no, like, black or red permanent and then It was against a control deck, and I just got their Johnny Vengeance that they had with oh, it or something wow. like that. Oh, wow, like luck. Um, but it, it doesn't happen very often, obviously. It's something you want to avoid, but you have to be careful. But yeah, otherwise, shuffling in 15, taking 15 out is done. I do not, personally, maybe you can do it, I do not recommend using this tactic in sealed, shuffling in your oh, no, no, sideboard no, no. and then taking out your not deck. In sealed. Not such a good idea. No, um, but but in constructed, this is, uh, this is what I was kind of referring to. But yeah, it's it's funny you mentioned the celestial purge thing. That's definitely happened to me where I think I had the main deck because uh, because there were so much Jund uh, around at the time, and I think I ended up playing against a mono green deck. So I'm like, okay, that's a card I can take out because I like had him in my hand. And I go to game two and I like whatever way I sideboarded. And then I drew the celestial, <laughs> celestial purge, and was like, man, I can't believe I was sitting there like agonizing over what to take out, um, trying to figure out what I wanted to, what I wanted to do, and you know I ended up making the decision, going into the game and finding a card that obviously was not relevant for whatever reason. I just overlooked it when I was sideboarding, and uh, that's that's one of those, one of those situations where it comes in handy to actually have uh, maybe notes for sideboarding. To, so you just know this is what I'm taking out and this is what I'm putting in and then you don't really need to think about it and you make those kind of mistakes but it's <laughs> tough to have uh, notes against decks that you don't expect for example Eldrazi Green in that last match uh, may have had a little trouble having notes prepared to play against a Vengevine <laughs> Necrotic Ooze deck so. yeah and for those who are just tuning in who didn't see that, that deck before I'm sure it'll be up in the coverage later it's a really interesting deck it had a Johnny Gold main, Vengevine, Necrotic Ooze, Gigantomancer. Uh, he's 3 1 now, we'll see how he does, but it's a very cool Bruce Squadron Hawk right. tied all together. But at, at the match at hand, for those of you just tuning in, we've got uh, Patrick Chapin on the right side of your the screen playing yeah, Blue Black Control. Pretty I stock will, uh, list, except he's got these Mem Knights in his sideboard, which are really interesting. Yeah. And on the left, we've got uh, Carlos Alay, who is uh, playing Blue White Control. Got a couple inter interesting things, he's got Vencers, but mostly it's uh, just Kago. Uh, yeah, although we haven't seen the call yet, have we? No, we have not seen the Squadron Hawk yet, but I assume uh, if he is going to probably win this match, he'll probably have cast him at least once. Uh, and that's really all he needs sometimes. Um, and we talked earlier about how good Squadron Hawk is in this deck. I mean, 
because you can cast it and go with your squadron hawks. You can use Jace, put cards back on top. Yeah. Uh, shuffle your library uh, with squadron hawk. Go with your other squadron hawks. It has so many different different abilities. Um, anyway, for those just tuning in, uh, you were watching the Star City Games Open Series in San Jose Live on SCG Live. This is Gavin Verhe, and I'm joined here by Joey Pasco of Yo MTG Taps on Star City Games. And uh, this is a pretty good control feature match here. Patrick yeah. Chapin, uh, the hardened innovator on the right-hand side of the screen. He knows what he's doing, obviously. He's been a lot of pro tours, yeah. played a lot of Magic. On the left side, we have an up, we've got the up-and-comer, Carlos Alley. Uh, I assume he's a local player who's playing blue-white and trying to uh, yeah. take a crack at beating the, the innovator. Yeah. 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 So there's the squadron hawk we were just mentioned. Yep, I and think there it uh, is. squadron hawk comes down. I think Carlos grabbed, grabbed two. Hawks. Yeah, he grabbed two copies, I believe, just to uh, just right to right fill right. his hand. Obviously, no no point in getting uh, in getting all three if it's going to put him in a situation <laughs> to discard one. Exactly. And we were talking about this earlier about how in the control matchup squadron hawk is so good because a one one flyer obviously isn't that strong on its own. But like, what are you going to do? You play it, and they're like. Well, I can't disfigure it, right? That's kind of silly. I don't want to consume the meek or anything. And it just sits there, whittling at your life total, whittling down your jaces, and, and all these different dynamics. And, you know, eventually it just wins. Uh, when the deck came out at Worlds, a lot of people were like, I don't get it. What are these Squadron Hawks doing? And then when people saw it in action, I think they really began to understand the full potential of that card. Yeah. And uh, it's a pretty good start by Carlos here. He's got yeah. a jace on three uh, with more Squadron Hawks in his hand. And it, and uh, Max McCall and I did a series on Star City Games a couple, maybe two months ago now, and we just played a lot of blue white against blue black. And what we found, the player with the active Jace almost always wins. And only I think one game the active Jace player not win. And just the stream of cards is just so hard to beat. Um, and with that turn three Jace, it looks like he's going to be trying to pull ahead this game over Patrick Chapin. And look who it is. Is that Bane Slayer Angel? It is. Uh, yeah, so, Angel. So Bane's and, uh, Angel came out of the sideboard for uh, LA. We were wondering where she's been in standard, and uh, <laughs> we get we get a cameo appearance at least to see her in Carlos's hand. Yeah, um, I mean, looking looking at the sideboard, he probably brought in those Bane Slayers, I would imagine. Yeah. Celestial Purge. Um, and maybe the Purges, although they only get rid of Grave Titan, so it depends on what his mm -hmm. plan is. If he's keeping in Day of Judgment, he might not need uh, those as much. Uh, creeping Tarpet. Um, and he does the Creeping Tarpet as well. Uh, he gets another Jace, obviously, bringing him up to uh, three Jace Balaren and uh, four Mind Sculptors. Uh, other than that, I don't really think he has a lot to right. bring in. Um, what do you think about Day of Judgment? Does he uh, does he keep any in? You know, I, I think you do. When I was watching, uh, when I was watching uh, the Guillaume's play in mm -hmm. the top eight, right? Guillaume, and, Matignon, uh, and Guillaume, Wafo Tapa playing mirror matches, blue black. Right, and, and Paulo Vito Adama de Rosa. When I was watching them play in the top eight worlds, they kept their big removal spells in because they have to wipe the board. If your opponent plays a Grave Titan, it's so crucial that you know, you've know you got a way to deal with it, right? And mm -hmm. they were using Consume the Meek just to get rid of the tokens. So I assume that Day of Judgment has got to be good out of the blue-white sideboard. Yeah. And I, w I wonder, because he's, he's got how many main deck? He's got uh, three yeah, main three and main one deck. sideboard. So but I think it's probably safe just, just leaving, leaving the three. Leaving them in. And, and yeah, they're slow, but when it counts, they're important. Maybe you shave down to two. Right. Um, but uh, I think that's a really interesting really inter interesting discussion. Right. Like, a lot of people might not leave theirs in. I, I, think, I, I think some people would leave theirs in. It's, it's interesting to see the different dynamics you can take on that. All right, so uh, obviously, um, right? Yeah, J uh, Chapin, who I almost just called Jace. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're really one and the same. They, at they this are, point, right, aren't exactly. They? Oh, he's just missing the hoodie. Um, yeah, he uh, he took the Jace the Mind Sculptor out of Carlos's hand with the duress, and then Carlos uh, spreading seized the black mana on Chapin's side of the board uh, by taking care of that tar pit. So uh, Chapin preordains. He sees a Grave Titan and something he puts on top. And he puts the Grave Titan on the bottom, be I believe because he's holding Elliot another Young Grave Titan. To the main main stage, please. Elliot Young to the main main stage, please. Alright, and so uh, 
So Carlos was going to be in a really good position this game. Unlike last yeah. game where he was tectonic edged into oblivion, he got the turn three Jace, he's got squadron hot clock, and, and as we said, they're just unassuming. They're just the 1-1 flyers, but that's two damage a turn. And in a control mirror match, often that's all you need. Is that a squadron clock? <laughs> a I guess? squadron clock indeed. Clock. Everyone needs a rich egg in. Yeah. Um, Alright. Um, <laughs> Squadron clock. I guess I've got to speak with like a British accent. That was terrible. No, we not <laughs> I'm not even gonna try that Once again. Once I did a, a podcast <laughs> entirely in a British accent, I think and, I, uh, I remember people that. People not enjoy it. No. The funny thing is, I feel like I can do a pretty good one when I'm in the car by myself. Yes, I talk to myself in the car. I mean, who does? In an accent. Um. I mean, I, look. I'm sure if someone just like put a recorder in my house and just let it run for a week. Oh they, my There'd God, be yeah. so many strange things they'd pick up on the other and so many accents and weird words and phrases I say to myself over and over again. It's Absolutely. Know, it's very weird. I, I have fun talking to myself, you know? It's, yeah, you know, it's true. Although uh, I definitely talk to myself when I'm angry too. Like make up words, you know? Like oh yeah. Cool things. Um, so, uh, which tape and do I, I, he slid it right under the graphic there. Uh, was that a creeping tar pit that he attacked with? Yeah. Oh, he took out the the Jace. Yeah, the baby took out Jace. The tar pit. Um. Now we were uh, when Glenn was over here. He was talking about how uh, the mana denial in in standard right now in in control decks. It's you know the way the way the control decks seem to be able to fight each other. And we saw Chapin take advantage of it in game one, and now Carlos doing it in game two with the uh, with the spreading seeds on the tar pit. Um, Denying black mana, uh, Chapin has obviously drawn another tar pit, which is uh, which is relevant. Now wait a second, does he have? Where did he get the black mana to activate the other tar pit? That's uh, he's got a swamp. Oh, that's a swamp. I'm sorry, glare. Uh, no, it's cool. I uh, <clears throat> yeah, I totally agree. It's different than in other formats because normally like control matchups are. Oh, and here comes Sun, Sun Titan. Titan. Sunny delight. Getting back Jace. That's gonna be rough. Uh, anyway, normally in control matchups, it's you know about like your counter magic. Or maybe your removal, like your card drawing, your Jaces, but an interesting paradigm we haven't really seen before is this land destruction route, because not only do you have the tectonic edges, but you know, there are these man lands coming in and out, and you can just kill them, and it sets them back a land too. And lands are so important. All right, so we've got a drum roll, please. <laughs> Titan. Clash of the Titans here. We've got Sun Titan versus Grave Titan. I love it. It's, <laughs> it you, you just know, like, Carlos just looks at his hand, he's like, all right, I'm done playing control, it's time to brawl, here comes the Sun Titan. Captain Chapin's like, all right, you know I got it, here comes the Grave Titan. Right on. And now it's time for them to come together and clash, and let's see what we get. Grave Titan is, might be stronger if left unopposed for a while, but that Sun Titan's gonna make sure that Jace doesn't go anywhere, he's gonna be able to bring a lot of tectonic edges back, he's got quite a few options. So uh, what do you think, can Rashad Zombies uh, tussle with some of those Squadron Hawks? I mean, those, those hawks obviously have the choice of whether to tussle with the zombies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think, I assume Carlos left Day of Judgment in his deck, or brought yeah, Celestial Purge, yeah, something to deal with the Grave Titan. Right, exactly if, what if we're talking about. If all that's going on is, uh, are the zombie tokens, it's not a big deal, but if he can't deal with them immediately and there's going to be more zombie tokens, those squadron hawks might have to turn into chump blockers pretty fast. So much for the squadron clocks. Yeah, well, he's going for the squadron clock. Well, bring it. So does that, he serve uh, with the Sun Titan as well? No, just the Squadron yeah, Clock. That's interesting. Baltimore Ravens 21, Pittsburgh Steelers 14, with 725 remaining in the third quarter. Okay, it sounds like the Steelers scored, but uh, oh, my heart. <laughs> Will Elliot Young please come I, uh, to the main stage? Elliot Young to the main stage, please. That, that attack uh, was interesting because if he attacks with the Grave Titan, or with the Sun Titan, and he blocks, Chapin blocks with the Grave Titan, then they trade up. And normally that's a good trade there, so that indicates to me that Carlos thinks he's in a favorable position. Because uh, he, I mean, if he doesn't have a way to wipe the board or anything like that, it feels like you'd really want to try and offer the trade there. It feels like it's going to either get chump blocked or the patch is just going to take six. Right. So that attack's really interesting to me. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh... So Chapin's deep in the tank here. He knows that, that these moves are crucial. Everyone counts. He's facing down Gideon now. Chase Warren. And he plays. And he trades up Jace's. Yeah. And he and goes with the uh, land of Jace of his own. Yeah, yep, Jace the, the Mind Sculptor. Mind Sculptor. Mind Sculptor. 
sculpting minds like Jace's? Do you comprehend me? That's one of the lines in, uh, in Chapin's song. Okay. The second I was going to berate you, but uh, it, the fact that it's part of the song, I can, I'll let that, I'll let it go. All right, so, uh, so Grave Titan gets in the red zone, or the long with, zone, uh, as long we're here. With some Rashad's. And uh, yeah, and Rashad is looking good and taking down uh, his opponent. Yeah. So that was that was obviously Gideon. He um, he had to attack, I think. Yeah. And uh, Gideon gone. <laughs> Gideon is always the opponent. Uh, right, so did Jace bounce the Titan? Is that what happened? Uh, I think that's what must have occurred. Yeah. So Jace bounced the Titan. Which is probably the right play. It's right. going to make his opponent replay the Titan. Because the, uh, cause the Titan would have attacked anyway, so you still get the trigger either way. Does uh, J uh, Chapin doesn't have any mana up, does it? Does he? I don't see any. So if, if his opponent replays Sun Titan, gets back Jace, it, it's the Jace seal, you know, kills uh, the Mind Sculptor. Seems like a reasonably strong play. Um, but, I mean, at the same time, like, he, he, knows Chapin, he knows that Chapin has more tricks, right? If he taps out for that Sun Titan again, Chapin can just as easily be like, all right, untap another Jace bouncer guy, and then he just cracks in. Yeah. Carlos is at 19, but it's still going to be rough. I mean, look at that board state. Four mm -hmm. zombies and a Grave Titan. Yep, yep he then. did exactly what I said. Yeah. So he opts to bring down the Sun Titan, which I think he has to do. But Chapin could have any number of tricks in his sleeve. Yeah. And here comes Squadron Hawk, I would guess, right? Yep, yeah, Squadron Hawk. Uh, any left in the library? Yep. One I don't one think so. Time. I don't think so yeah. either, but... Unless you just decline the search. Yeah. You just don't need him. Yeah. I, I don't really think that's as likely as uh, there not being any left in his library. Um, So let's see what Patrick's got here. Can't quite see his hands, but he's certainly thinking about his options. It, 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 like, the players played fast early on, so as you can tell, they know that by playing fast early on, it means they can take a little more time here. They can take a little more time here. Um, and uh, yeah, that's when it counts, these tiny little decisions that can make a big difference. Yeah, so uh, let's see here. There's a Jace. Um, it's little Jace though. Draws a Doom Blade, not exactly what he wants against the Squadron Hawks, but it's good against the Sun Titan. Which I, I couldn't see, or else I would have just straight up said it's good for the Sun Titan. His opponent is tapped out, so that Sun Titan certainly will eat the Doom Blade. Um, he goes with uh, an Inquisition. Interesting. And uh, nice. we've got Island Over Island, Island Squadron Hawk, Jace Island. Jace. <laughs> Double Jace in the last Squadron Hawk. Uh, so there goes, uh, I guess he's going to take Baby Jace because Inquisition is uh, three mana or less. So, so we're about to be joined by uh, Star City Games open competitor and grinder and no, 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 grinder. writer Adam Prozac. What's up, Gavin? Hey, it's good to see you. How's it going? Uh, so, uh, for those of you just joining us, I'm Gavin Verhey, and to my, I guess you can't see, but to my right is just Joey <laughs> Pasco, and to my left now is Adam Prozac. How are you doing today, Adam? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. Today's a good day. What's your record? Uh, five and zero. Oh. Five and zero. Oh. That's, that's a good record. Yeah, that's a good record <laughs> to have. Can't get better. <laughs> no. What were you choosing to ball with today? I am battling rugs. I will. I literally woke up today having blue lights up, and. Uh, Woke up and decided to play a yeah. um, big old day of switches. Not my style. But uh, I generally know what I'm gonna do, you know, long before tournament. Seems to have benefited you well today, though. Yeah. So far. What made you change? Like, uh, I've had, I have experience with rock, really it's more. Okay. It's more so. Well, that like, makes I'm sense. I'm familiar playing other deck, like. Either way, I get to play Jays. Um, yeah. That's, what, that's what's important. Right, exactly. That's that's what's the most important thing for me, too. You took 14? Uh, tomorrow I get to yeah, play Jays, too. Yeah, awesome. Such a good card tomorrow, across format. Tomorrow's a real deal. I will destroy your colony. Oh, yeah? Okay. And this is this match live? This is this match yeah. is live. Yeah, we are watching uh, Patrick Chapin with blue-black control versus Carlos Alley with blue-white control. And it uh, looks like Alley had the early advantage, but with the Squadron Hawk and Jace, but Chapin managed to stick a Grave Titan. And as we can see, it's all been downhill from there. Grave uh, Titan is in a big deal. I beat three of them in game one of my eight. last match. Seriously? Wow. Seriously. That's pretty impressive. I, I was impressed with myself too. 
Wow, what'd you do? Uh, well, Grave Titan had one of them on lockdown. And they were consecutive. I had Grave Titan already in play. And lockdown is first Grave Titan. And he just passed the second to. And all three were in consecutive turns. But I had like two Cobras, two uh, Beasts from Garruk, uh, two Raging Ravines that my Lotus Lotus Cobra was able to turn them both on. And so I was just able to send like a huge Alpha Swing into his, uh, his uh, Zombies that returns. And, and I got to untap, like he had this tap with his Grave Titans tomorrow. to, uh, to get blockers. For the and after a while, I, he would have uh, managed if, uh, it's regular if his last so land was, uh, was uh, not a fetch land. Because he was at one and he needed the, the last land to activate.